Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy, weather rate certified 10 years in a row. All right, well, I just, woo, love that shot behind you. I wasn't <laughs> going to leave with that, but beautiful. Isn't it so pretty? This is North Ogden. Emily and I were actually just talking about workout clothes. This is the weekend to get out and enjoy the outdoors because I'm telling you, it is just so stunning out there and the temperatures are going to be beautiful. Thank you to Brian Whiteleather for sending that in the pop of yellow with those aspens. All right, breaking down what's going on in the weather world. We started out October with the warmth. We hold on to it as we get through the weekend. We've got to talk about the water year. We've just wrapped it up and we're starting a new one. We've got a weather pattern shift that we're tracking. I've got the timeline on when to expect that wet weather as we get through the next couple of days. Amazing fall color video. You don't have to leave the house to see the fall colors. We bring them to you here at ABC4. Thanks to Scott Taylor again for these gorgeous shots in Butterfield Canyon. See, I just saved you the hike. That's what we do on a Friday. If you are thinking about getting out, there are plenty of places that are peaking right now. Those popular spots include the Alpine Loop, Guardsman's Pass, Bear Lake peaking now. We've still got a minute for Highway 12. So Central and Southern Utah, bit delayed, maybe another week or so. That includes SR 143, LaSalle Loop, and Nebo. They're all popping. So get out there and enjoy the colors if you can. And if you don't, it's okay. We bring them to you right here on your Friday night. Satellite radar showing pretty quiet conditions out there with just a few clouds in the northwestern corner of the state. The temperatures right now dropping 50s and 60s along the Wasatch Front. We're going to bottom out in the 50s in Salt Lake. A few upper 40s expected at 60 in Moab and 68 in St. George. Cooling things off. Here's a look at the water year. Okay. I got to show you that we definitely typically average with the new 30 year norms over 15 inches of rain. We didn't hit 11 in Salt Lake and you can see the months where we really didn't do well and that includes last autumn through December. Even January was below average, so not great news there. When you compare that to our other rough drought year, that's 2002 and 2003, we actually had more water for the water year. We did get 11 inches, actually above that 11.77, and then the average there at 15 and a half. Doesn't that sound nice? Where's that other four and a half inches? I miss it. We didn't have a good year, but we start new today. So let's just hope autumn brings in that wet weather. We don't see much of it, but the chance of it tomorrow in eastern Utah, that isolated chance with storms developing over the higher terrain that does include the Uintas into Castle Country and the spine of Utah over the mountains by Sunday seasonal temperatures really pretty. A bulk of the state will just see sunshine and the warming temperatures, which is going to be great. All right, our next weather maker comes in next week. It's going to be the middle of the week. We get the wind first, then cooler temperatures and precipitation potential in northern and southern Utah. 70s along the Wasatch Front, 78 in Moab, 86 in St. George, low 70s along the I-15 corridor. Really pretty. Here's a look at the St. George 7-day. The chance of showers Tuesday and Wednesday as that system comes in. We get the warm before the storm on Monday. 90 in the south, 80 in the north, and then the numbers well, they take a tumble there. We're going to see that wet weather. Best chance Wednesday heading into Thursday. That system a bit delayed, but by the middle of the week, we should see some changes. Absolutely stunning weekend. Friday nights are for planning your weekend here at ABC4, but they're also for football. Let's send it over to the sports guys.